All right, so uh, uh, we're, we're going to get back into uh, talking about Purpose Place um, uh, and uh, really had a uh, great week on meditating. Uh, it's so interesting how when you live this life out, the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, but every aspect of your life you'll see God is revealing something to you. Uh, the tough part is the adversary spends so much time trying to get us caught up and so busy that we don't pick up when God's communicating. But if we can kind of stay tuned, and we can say that way, stay tuned, you'll see uh, when you're working with the children, you can see, you know, when you're dealing with your managers, you know, or you're working with the kids, you'll see that uh, God is speaking through every aspect of your life. Um, God uses everything, you know, in your dreams, in your imaginations. You're driving in a car talking to your, your spouse, and God is always revealing something. You know, we have this thing, um, we're driving around, it's, we're passing a phone back. Yeah, could you, could you put that note in my phone? Could you put this note in my phone? Because God is always communicating through uh, consultation. And I believe today uh, you guys will get to see uh, at least what God has been communicating in every aspect of what he wants to do from how he, sh he revealed it to your pastor throughout the entire week. Because it's not just sitting around studying scriptures. I do that a lot. It's not just sitting around reading scripture. I do that a lot. It's making sure I'm, I'm, I'm in tune with his presence all the time. You know, if you look through the Bible, you'll see uh, God has somebody over by a tree. He says, now look at that tree. You know, and then he'll start telling them, talking to them about stuff. And Jesus started talking. He started talking about agriculture because God was showing them. He said, now look at how that played itself out. He said, now I want you to use that to show them. Remember the prophets? He says, he, he actually displayed them. He said, okay, now, now put on this belt. You know, everything was communicated through every aspect. And that's what God wants to do in our life. So well, a lot of times when we're saying, man, I'm looking for an answer, don't limit how God wants to answer you. Don't, don't limit it to just when you go into your closet. You going into your closet may be him purging what's causing you not to pick up a signal. When you walk out of the closet, may be the answer. You know, you, you get a call from your mom, and you go, man, I'm trying to talk to God. She's blowing the opportunity for me to get the answer to my prayer, when that conversation may be the answer to your prayer. I was in my study, and my wife called me last night, well, text me uh, in the evening, because she found these cabinets and tables for next door, you know. And uh, so, so I was like, all right, babe, I said, could you get them now, and then I pick them up later? Because I was on a rhythm with my time with God, and my goal was I'm not leaving the study today. You know, I'm not coming out for nothing. I'm not coming out for football. I'm not coming out for nothing. But I sure came out, didn't I? <laughs> but the interesting thing is when I came out, I had conversations. We had conversations with the people that was helping me put the stuff on the, on the truck. We had conversations with the guy at, at the U-Haul. We had conversations with the people that was dropping off their U-Haul. We had conversations, uh, uh, me, uh, my wife, Marcus, and Stella, because uh, uh, Marcus helped, helped me move stuff in, and Stella was helping my wife uh, clean the bathrooms yesterday. So it was just, all, all of it was conversation. Me and my wife had conversations going to and fro. She got to finish up all her reading going to and fro. We drove so much. She was like, I just finished my reading. I was like, that's nice. <laughs> but each thing was a conversation. Guy talk was a conversation. So guy called me after guy talk. That was his first time. That was a conversation. Uh... Listening to uh, Ray on Guy Talk was a conversation. I talked to a guy last night that called in a Guy Talk for the first time. I had promised I would call him. And he was just like, so, man, I'm so glad I called him. He says, I don't care what I'm doing. If less I'm, he's a driver. He said, less I'm driving on Saturdays, I'm going to be on that call. He said, man, thanks for not giving up on me. Hadn't seen me in a long time, in a while. And but since he's on my prayer list, all y'all on my prayer list, I can't forget about you. So, so I told him, I said, I, yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I texted him, I said, I'm gonna call you today. I'm gonna call you today. So last night, I hadn't came out to the study. I called him on the way back. And then we had a conversation about his son. But see, in that conversation, God was saying something. I heard stuff I never heard before in my life, ever in the history of ever. I worked with youth for a long time, never heard it. Because God is always saying something. That's why he tries to pull you away from your little world because 
Every time you pour something out, you're receiving something. Remember, Jesus was walking through the town, and they said, you know, he was going to heal somebody, and the young lady pulled the hem of his garment. He was like, who touched me? They said, everybody touching you. He said, no, virtue has gone out of me. What he was saying is some, some power came up through me and was imparted into somebody. And if you keep on reading, he went from there to raising somebody from the dead. But I can guarantee you, if you, God showed me this, if he hadn't have been touched by that woman going through that crowd, he wouldn't have had the power to raise that person from the dead. See, because power don't just come th to the person, it comes through you to the person. So it has to have an effect on you. Look at it like a straw. You know, you, you, you pull something up through the straw, the, the contents is in the straw too, ain't it? And even if it goes through the straw, there's some residue inside the straw, right? See, so when you allow God to use you to affect other people's lives throughout the course of a week, the power that, that, that God uses to touch them has to go through you. A lot of times you get healed just on proximity. You get empowered just because you, you were the, the conduit that he used. But if God can't use you as a conduit, you don't get to experience virtue constantly going through you. We should be like rivers. All right, so we're talking about purpose plays. <laughs> we're talking about get you, get you, get you, uh, saturate the ground a little bit. We're talking about purpose plays. Um, and uh, it's a designated place to rendezvous with God. A designated place to rendezvous with God. And you'll see this. Uh, so we, up to this point, we've been talking about our place. There's a place that God has for us. And we, we went to... Uh, I decided to pull out one of my other Bibles to teach. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to try to teach out of my old Bible because eventually it's kind of hard. Uh, second Samuel, chapter 7. Thanks, Minister Lamar. So Second Samuel, chapter <laughs> Second Samuel, chapter 7. So, God, you're going to do it like that today. All right, so chapter 7, and we read here in um, verse 10. It says, uh, matter of fact, you get a chance, just read through 2 Samuel chapter 7. Just to, It's one of my chapters I read every day, but you, it's some rich stuff in that chapter. But verse 10, it says, moreover, I will appoint a place for my people, Israel, and will plant them. So I'm not just going to appoint a place, I'm going to plant them there, uh, that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of, the, of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. So, 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 and this was on the heels of David chilling. He's resting in his house. He's just like, he's like Nathan. He's talking to Nathan, he's like, Nathan, man, I'm just, this is cool. Like, then he started to think, he started to do what some of us, God is hoping we do. He started to reflect and realize he'd been so busy winning, he forgot how he was winning, and that was God. So we just take God for granted sometimes. And he, he just decided, he said, man, I'm sitting here in a house of cedar, and God is not, I haven't built a house for God. So Nathan said, man, go on, do what you got to do. Obviously, God's with you. Nathan was not prophesying. Nathan wasn't pulling from some revelation from God as a man of God. Nathan was just going by what he saw. Obviously, God's with you. Every time I see you do something, you win. He said, go on, do what you got to do. Nathan made the statement, and then God showed up to talk to Nathan. He said, I appreciate you encouraging him, but this is my angle on it. I need you to tell David this. Have I ever, in the history of me being with any of y'all, you ever hear me talk about I needed a house? Then he said, I walked in tents. I walked in tabernacles. But did you ever hear me read? Me, I'm God. I make my request known. Like me and my wife always say, you don't have to figure us out. I, I tell you what I think. So let's say if I think you're doing something stupid, I, I'd have told you. If I think you're wrong, I told you. If I think you messed up, I'd just say it. I know y'all probably not used to that, but I just, I mean, I won't say it to put you down, if I think you need to adjust something, I'll talk to you about it, won't I? Yeah. But I won't say it like, I can't believe you doing that. You just wicked sinner. You. But I'm going to talk to you about it at least, right? So you don't have to guess. I wonder what he's thinking. You heard what I'm thinking. 
And basically, God was saying the same thing. God was like, if I wanted a house, I would have told you. He said, I didn't tell you. He said, this is what I want you to tell David. He says, look, look. When he said I walked in the, in the tent, and he said I walked in the tabernacle, he was saying that for a reason. He said, tell David. He said, this is, this is how we're going to roll. He says, I'm going to have his son build a house for my name. He still didn't say I want a house for me. He said, but, but he started off by saying, I have a place for my people. David's talking about building a place for him. He responded with, I got a place for my people. I got a, I, I, I got a great place for my people. Now, now, so that's like Terrence talking about how he wants to build a house for someone, and God's showing up saying, oh, no, no, I, 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 wanna, I want Terrence to build something for my people. I want my people to have a place. So God was saying something when he said that, which we'll get to here in a minute. Because right, so, we talked about a little bit of that last week. But I want to give you two scriptures that we're going to hang on today. So that was 2 Samuel 7, 10. And let's look at this because it's so interesting how God does stuff. Even when our minister John Rene was teaching on faith, he used, uh, was, it, was it Genesis 22 you talked about today? So he used Genesis 22. And if you read through Genesis 22, it's... Uh, it keeps talking about there was a place. Let's, let's go to Genesis 22, and then we'll go to John chapter 14. I think it was Genesis 22 he was at. I could be wrong, but. Yeah. Look, Genesis 22, verse 3, it says, Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took uh, two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and cleaved the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place which God had told him. He went to a particular pace. So underline that there. Then you get to verse 4. It says, Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. So it was a particular place. And then if you get to verse, uh, uh, verse 9, just for the sake of time, it says, And they came to the place which God had told him of. So, so it's not just a place. It's a place that God told him to go. It's a particular place that God had told him to go. Then you get down here to verse 14, and Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, which means my provider. So there was a, there, there was a place. Even, even uh, 10 chapters before, God said, leave from where you are and go to the place where I send you. And I talked about it in the last few weeks how, you know, everybody was supposed to be going to Canaan for a particular reason. God had a particular place. <laughs> God had a particular place, right? So, 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 so all right, now let's go to John 14. John 14, John 14, uh, verse 1. It says, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Worried about so many things. Got so many things on your mind. Consumed with care. It says, no, he said, no, he said, let not your heart be troubled. He says, you believe in God. John Renee talked about it today, right? Trusting in God. Didn't, didn't I hear you say that today, sir? Just trusting in God. He said, okay, you believe in God. Now, Jesus, this is Jesus talking. It's written in red letters. Believe also in me. He says, look, in my father's house are many mansions, places to dwell in, right? He says, if it were not so, I would have told you. Look, he says, I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. Look, look, look. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Key phrase. That where I am, there, that place, you may be also. And whither I go, you know the way you know. All right, so, so this, is, uh, uh, let's see, this is 14. And I think if, is it here? Uh, verse, drop down to verse six. It says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So, so now Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. Now we read all other scriptures. God said, I have a place for you. But Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. But in the other scripture, God says, I have a place, a place to rest, place, you know, sex, uh, second sin.